In my previous video about tanks, specifically the Sentinel tank, I briefly mentioned that other Dominion nations also had successful tank programs. Well, that is subjective depending on your definition of success. So I thought that I'd put a spotlight on another overshadowed tank program of World War II, the Canadian Ram. No, not that one. The Ram Cruiser Tank. Canada was in a similar position to Australia in 1940. With the surrender of France, Britain was forced to focus on building up its own defences, which therefore left her dominions to fend for themselves due to severe supply shortages. This is mainly due to the fact that Britain's pre-war economy of the 1930s had been designed with the idea that another world war would never happen again, or that if it did it wouldn't be for at least another 50 years. Remilitarization only truly began following the failure of the Munich Conference in 1938, by which point it was far too late to make any meaningful changes before the war began. Canada, similarly, was industrially unprepared to engage in another conflict so soon after the Great War. But Canada had the additional problem of having to deal with the continued effects of the Great Depression, which had remained mostly unresolved throughout the 1930s. But World War II ended up being a saving grace for the Canadian economy, as British manufacturing was relocated across the Atlantic to avoid German bombing. In June 1940, Factories in Montreal had accepted a contract to produce 300 Valentine infantry tanks to replenish the losses sustained at Dunkirk, which was followed later in the year with the production of an additional 488 tanks. This was the beginning of Canada's domestic tank industry, demonstrating that the nation now had the ability to manufacture its own tanks. In 1941, it was determined that Canada required its own cruiser tank for its newly formed armoured divisions. However, the Canadians wished to design their own variant, as although Canadian factories were capable of producing British designs, an over-reliance on certain British components had caused delays in the production of the Valentine tanks the previous year. Therefore, the Canadians reached out to the Americans for tank blueprints that they could utilise. The Americans responded with the M3 Lee. However, Canadian designers disliked it. The tank was considered too tall and under-armoured, and wouldn't function adequately according to Commonwealth tank doctrine. But the Canadians eventually agreed on a compromise. They would utilise the M3 chassis, but instead design a superior turret and armament structure. The key difference was the construction of the hull, which similar to the Sentinel was designed to be fully cast, giving the ram superior armour protection. The turret was also redesigned to be fully traversable, as well as replacing the US 75mm gun with the QF 6-pounder. The ram's engine was decided to be the Continental R975 aircraft engine. However, this had to be imported from the USA and was only produced in limited numbers, delaying production. The Ram Mark I began construction in June 1941, but was equipped with a two-pounder gun due to a lack of availability of the six-pounder alternative. It was produced in limited numbers until February 1942, when it was replaced with the Ram Mark II, which was equipped with the proper six-pounder gun. In total, just over 2,000 ram tanks were built in Canada between November 1941 and July 1943. Compare that to the Sentinel tank in Australia, where only 65 units were produced. 2,000 is an outstanding achievement for Canada, especially at the time. Another variant, known as the Ram Mark III, was produced later in the war, having remodelled entrance hatches to improve crew comfort. However, the ram was never used in combat during the war, with almost all models being used in England as training vehicles. This is because the Ram was extremely similar to the US Sherman tank, which was the backbone of the Allied Armoured Corps throughout the war. Therefore, the British preferred to use the Ram as a reserve vehicle to train new recruits. But the Ram did see service in other forms. The hull of the Ram was converted into armoured personnel carriers, known as the Kangaroo, which was used by the Canadian Armoured Corps in 1944 and 1945 during the liberation of the Netherlands. The kangaroo design was a Canadian invention that was also used on Sherman and Churchill tank hulls and saw excellent usage in the war as a superior version of the British Universal Carrier. Additionally, some rams were converted into the Sexton, a self-propelled artillery gun, which was also another effective design being equipped with a 25-pound howitzer. Following the war, nearly 100 of the remaining ram tanks were sold to the Dutch government in 1947. They were used to equip the first Dutch tank battalions, each of them being refitted with a British 75mm anti-tank gun, 
They were used until 1952, when they were replaced by the Centurion tanks. However, the turrets of some ram tanks were used until the late 1960s as static defences in NATO lines. Some of these even remain today. Canada also produced variants of other tanks, such as this. The Skink, a self-propelled anti-air platform, but only three were ever produced. In addition, Canada also had its own variant of the Sherman, known as the Grizzly, which only had minimal changes. But production of this tank was mostly cancelled once it was realised that US production of the Sherman would be sufficient. In conclusion, Canada in World War II had a surprisingly extensive domestic tank program. In retrospect, most historians agree that the RAM was a bit of a waste, since it only diverted resources away from Sherman production, and since the RAM was never used in combat, producing it in such large numbers was really pointless. But the Kangaroo and Sexton alternatives were real frontline successes. So credit where credit's due, the RAM program wasn't entirely wasteful. And at the end of the day, the program was mostly done to help reinvigorate Canadian industry, which prospered greatly in the post-war years. And that about sums it all up. Thanks for watching. I have a Twitter now, so please consider following that. I recently shared some ideas about new videos, so head over there to check them out. Other than that, have a good day and goodbye.